How effective is creatine for building muscle mass? Improving lean body mass has a number of well-documented health benefits, including better bone strength, improved blood sugar control, and lower all-cause risk of early mortality. Now, resistance training is widely recognized as the most effective way to build lean body mass, and many people also use nutritional strategies, especially supplements like creatine, monohydrate, to further enhance these lean mass gains. Creatine has been found in some research to increase lean body mass more than resistance training alone, but there's quite a bit of uncertainty amongst the average gym goer about how it really works. Some think creatine helps people train harder, while others suggest that it might affect our muscle building pathway. Ways. However, it's unclear if creatine increases muscle protein synthesis directly. One important thing to keep in mind with creatine is that it can increase water retention, especially within the muscles. So early changes in body composition might appear as muscle gain, but some of that could be just water. Also, most studies combine creatine with resistance training, so it's hard to tell how much of the effect is from the supplement itself versus just the training. And what about the research that looks at creatine without exercise? Well, that's mostly been done in older adults, not in younger, healthy people people, so we can't always generalize those findings. Now the study that I'm reviewing today was designed to fill this gap. It aimed to find out whether a short seven day period using creatine without exercise would number one, increase lean body mass, and whether that short term effect influences the results of a longer 12 week resistance training program. The researchers also questioned whether a standard maintenance dose of five grams per day is enough to support ongoing muscle growth when combined with resistance training. To put it another way, does lean body mass increase from just taking creatine alone? And if so, is this the reason a creatine group may appear superior following a resistance training program? So let's take a look at the methods. What did the researchers do? Well, these researchers conducted a 13 week randomized control trial with 54 healthy untrained adults between the ages of 18 and 50. The participants were randomly assigned to either a creatine group, which took five grams of creatine monohydrate daily, or a control group who went without any supplements. The study was divided into two main phases. The first was a seven day wash-in period where participants did not exercise, but the creatine group began supplementation while the control group received nothing. The second phase was a 12 week resistance training program, which both groups completed. The workouts were the same for everybody and these included three full body sessions per week and was supervised by trained professionals to ensure consistency. Body composition was measured at three time points throughout the study. Before the study started, after the seven day wash in and at the end of the 12 weeks using a DEXA scan, which assesses lean mass and fat mass. To keep the conditions consistent, the participants were told to fast overnight before each scan and to avoid exercise for 12 hours beforehand to prevent inflammation and changes in total body water levels. Diet and physical activity were tracked throughout the study using food logs and questionnaires, but participants were asked not to change their normal eating or activity habits. Compliance with the creatine regimen was self-reported weekly and exercise attendance and effort were carefully monitored by the researchers. The study found that after just seven days of creatine supplementation without any exercise, participants in the creatine group showed a small but statistically significant increase in lean body mass, about half a kilogram more than the control group. This early lean body mass gain was most noticeable in the trunk region. Now, following the 12 week resistance training program, both the creatine and control groups gained around two kilograms of lean mass. When the researchers looked at the total change in lean body mass from the start of the study to the end of the training period, the creatine group had slightly greater overall gains, but this difference was small and was likely only influenced by the initial increase during the wash-in phase. Now, a further analysis by sex found that women experienced more noticeable lean body mass changes from creatine during that short-term phase. In contrast, men did not show any significant changes at any point related to creatine use. So I'll go ahead and post the results on the screen from the study that show the absolute changes in lean body mass across the different time periods in both the control and the creatine group. Now on the left is the change in lean body mass from baseline to the end of the seven day wash-in period. 
The result in the center is the changes observed from the wash-in or the beginning of the resistance training intervention to the end of the intervention. And on the right are the changes from baseline to after the resistance training intervention. So let's talk about all of this. Well, this study found that taking five grams of creatine daily for just one week without any exercise led to a small but measurable increase in lean body mass. However, when creatine was used during the 12 week resistance training program, it did not lead to superior muscle growth compared to simply resistance training alone. This suggests that the early lean mass gains from creatine might be due to temporary factors like water retention inside the muscle rather than true increases in skeletal muscle tissue. Now, one key point raised by the authors is that many past studies have overestimated creatine's effect on muscle growth, and this is because they didn't separate those short-term effects of creatine supplementation, aka water retention, from the long-term measured training outcomes. With that said, this study's unique design, which included a wash-in phase, really helped to isolate those effects. And these results highlight the importance of including a short creatine-only period in future research to avoid misleading conclusions about muscle growth. Interestingly, the data showed that women were more likely than men to show early increases in lean mass from creatine, particularly in the trunk area. While the exact reason isn't fully clear, I'd speculate that this comes down to two main factors. Firstly, women on average tend to consume less protein, especially from animal-based sources, which could influence how they respond to creatine. Second, hormonal differences, particularly throughout the menstrual cycle, may play a role in how creatine affects water retention and water balance in the body. However, this study unfortunately did not track hormonal levels or water changes, so more research is needed to better understand these differences. Finally, the researchers note that the standard creatine dose used in this study, which was 5 grams per day, may not be enough to enhance long-term muscle growth when combined with resistance training. They suggest that future studies should test higher doses or longer loading phases and also include hydration measurements to better understand how creatine affects body composition. So what are my main takeaways? Well, if you're thinking about taking creatine to build muscle, this study offers a few helpful insights. First, creatine can slightly increase your lean body mass without even working out. But just recognize that these early changes in lean mass are probably just added water in your muscles and not actual muscle growth. Secondly, if you're planning to use creatine alongside a strength training program, recognize that a standard dose of five grams per day with only seven days of loading may not give you extra muscle building benefits beyond what training alone already provides, or at least not in the short term. Now, this doesn't mean that creatine isn't useful. It's still one of the most well-researched and safe supplements out there, and it offers a number of other redeeming qualities, such as improvements in strength, power, endurance, and even some cognitive benefits. But if you're looking for maximum muscle growth based on these results, you might need a higher dose of creatine. But regardless, what we can say for sure is that consistent, well-designed, evidence-based training programs seems to be the most important factor for optimizing muscle gains. So the bottom line is creatine won't replace hard work in the gym, but it may help support your progress in other areas, especially if used the right way. Now, for more evidence-based training programs focused on building muscle and getting really strong, check out the Beer Fit app. It offers expertly designed workouts backed by science to help you make real progress, not just fluid gains. Download Beer Fit today and start training the smarter way.